the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and welcome to our ongoing uh, CXO series. Charlie Giancarlo is here as the Chief Executive Officer of Pure Storage. Charlie, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks, Dave. And uh, like you said, always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, I got to start uh, asking you, last time we talked, uh, you were recovering uh, from, from COVID. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, actually. I, I, I seem to have fully recovered. I've been on, uh, you know, I've been on 17 mile hikes at, uh, at 10,000 feet. Uh, I've been doing a lot of biking. So it looks like, uh, you know, other than my wife telling me that, uh, you know, maybe I'm not all there. Uh, but she did that before COVID. So, yeah, you know, it, I'm used to it. Well, that's awesome. Awesome to hear. Well, of course, just yesterday you guys announced your quarter. I want to I want to start there. Um, you beat expectations, although revenue growth was a little, you know, less robust than we're used to from Pure. But, you know, you clearly had, you know, some some activity regarding COVID in the U.S. International, very strong. Um, but but again, we'll talk about this. The U.S. customers kind of reevaluating was your really key point. I got a lot of takeaways from the call they want to ask you about. But the big thing was you had set a very confident tone on the earnings call. So I kind of want to start there. You know, give us your summary. Yeah, no, thank you for that. We, uh, so first of all, we feel like we're operating really with uh, most, uh, uh, with all of our cylinders uh, going. Uh, we, uh, you know, all have operational discipline. Uh, we've been adding uh, to our R&D out um, uh, capabilities. We've hired people this year. You know, and we showed a profit uh, this quarter. So we're operating, you know, I think very well. We've introduced a boatload of, of new products, uh, you know, continuously over the last uh, couple of quarters, uh, including, you know, Flash Array C, the first and only uh, all flash product that competes at, at low, uh, at second tier disk, uh, disk levels. Uh, we introduced uh, uh, f uh, our file services on uh, Flash Array C, which really allows us to go into the general purpose of file market. Uh, and we, we picked up a huge amount of share, as you well know, in Q1. We believe we're gonna pick up uh, you know, significant share uh, in Q2 as well, uh, well above our competitors. So we feel like uh, you know, given everything we can control, we're doing very well. As you said, uh, you know, in uh, Q2, what we saw was uh, Europe, which uh, came out of the crisis, uh, for the most part, uh, recovered very, very nicely. Uh, the U.S. that's still in the crisis, uh, of course, we're seeing uh, we're seeing some slowness, and especially among uh, what we call the mid-tier or the commercial uh, market. Uh, you know, they've been hurt very badly by the uh, by the lockdown and the economy. And uh, you know, we have uh, they have our sympathies, but we definitely saw some slowdown there. Yeah, so I want to talk about the market share, maybe unpack some of that data. I mean, you guys gave a cautious outlook. You kind of gave no formal guidance. But you did informally guide flat, you know, so so yep. you kind of gave some some visibility there. So actually, I appreciated it. Uh, I think some of the analysts were a little bit concerned there, but I think that's prudent. Uh, and really, the expectations are a function of your expectations around the COVID recovery. You, you, I think you mentioned in the call, it's almost state by state. And, and very clearly, the international where you've seen comebacks have been very, very strong. Right. So, you know, I think our, our customers' data continues to grow, if anything, growing faster under a lockdown environment and the move to more digital engagement uh, with, uh, you know, with everyone, uh, their customers, their employees, et cetera. So uh, digital continues to grow, uh, which generally uh, uh, creates more demand. Uh, however, of course, as you know, in storage, customers generally have uh, always have a buffer. Uh, and what, what we saw in Q2 was customers starting to reconsider how they're going to spend their IT budget. Uh, and whenever you have a reconsideration, you have a slowdown. And that's what we experienced. Uh, and especially in the US where the effects of the, uh, uh, of the pandemic, of the economy have been much more severe than in other parts of the world. Yeah, so I, I wanna just talk about some data. Uh, I often, as you know, like to share some data from our partner ETR. Every quarter we do the survey. So guys, bring up that chart and, and what it shows here uh, uh, set it up for the audience and, and Charlie for you as well, is this is essentially net score, which is a measure of spending velocity for the major primary guys. So we show pure at the top and orange. That's just a coincidence, guys. And then HPE, NetApp, Dell, and, and IBM. And you can see the, the net score, and then it, I've superimposed uh, that in that table in the upper left, 
And you can see pure storage is really the only one of these majors in the green. Everybody else is in the, in the red, which is either the low or high teens. And you can see a little bit of the COVID impact, you know, last quarter, but, but holding strong at about a 40% net score where everybody else is, as I say, in the mid-teens. Um, and so that's a real positive. I, I point out this is a forward-looking survey. So we're asking people, what are you planning and spending in the second half you know, relative to what you spent in the first half. And again, we see pure with consistent momentum. I'll add, just if you looked at the past quarter, you guys announced plus 2% growth, IBM was plus 3% growth, and we know why they have the mainframe tailwind. HPE played a little hide the growth ball. If you, I don't know, Charlie, how closely you looked at it, but they said 4% growth sequentially. Now, the last quarter, they were down 16%. The same quarter last year, they were flat. So, so it looks to me like they, they, they were down this quarter. So that was, you know, we appreciate when you have clear guidance. Right. And then well, their, storage tonight, by, their storage, by the way, was down 10% year over year. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't pick up on that. And so, yeah, that, that, it seemed like that to me. And then NetApp is tonight and we get Dell tomorrow. But, but so you were saying that you, you gain share. Um, what, what gives you that confidence? Well, several, uh, you mean for Q2, we know we ga gained yes. it in Q1, right? Uh, we were 15 points above the industry average and oh, yeah, about sure. 20 points ahead of our competitors. Uh, you know, we saw similar momentum from our part. Remember, we're 100% partner uh, uh, fulfilled, right? And so, you know, in co conversations with our partners, we have a general sense of how we're doing vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, competitive uh, environments. We also know that our win rates have held very nicely and, uh, in quarters, you know, almost every quarter, we're used to about a 20% per annum higher growth rate than our competitors. So when all of our metrics, uh, uh, that is uh, our relative metrics, things like wind rates and so forth, uh, continue unabated, we generally expect to have the same outcome. Great. Uh, and uh, so let me go through some of the takeaways that I have from, from the quarter. I'll just run through them and we can go wherever you like. But, you know, the COVID snapback obviously is a key indicator. We saw that in international versus the U.S. Correct. New opportunities for growth. I want to talk about that at some length. The flasher AC object, the cohesity piece is another TAM expansion. The pipeline is very encouraging, but there's some uncertainty leading, leading to your tepid guidance. Very strong gross margins as usual. Um, the subscription model was, is growing nicely. I want to hit on that. And, and the, the RPO. The remaining uh, performance obligations grew to almost a billion dollars. That's that's a big number. New logos, solid at 20 percent. No real change in the competitive, but you called out you see more power max than power store. That was really interesting. You're still hiring pretty aggressively uh, last quarter, and your technology investments continue. And I'll throw in the seven nines, which I think is another industry first. But it, where do you want to go there? Yeah, well, seven nines is a uh, reliability uh, figure for those uh, of your audience that doesn't know. It relates to how much uh, uptime or availability a, uh, a product has, or in our case, a fleet of products. We have tens of thousands of arrays in the field. And last quarter, we achieved what's called seven nines, which is the equivalent across the fleet of only three seconds of downtime per array per year, uh, you know, which is, you know, uh, most other vendors have struggled to stay to five nines. Uh, and that's typically without even counting what they call scheduled downtime for upgrades. We don't even count that. We count all downtime of any type. So, uh, you know, it's a very, you know, we're, we're clearly, I, th I think with no doubt, we're the most reliable product on the, on the market these days. So I want to, I want to come back to the, to the, to the TAM discussion, uh, because you, you, I inferred many opportunities for you guys to continue to grow. I mean, it's, you know, Flash, it's still about Flash. Flash is gaining share relative to the spinning disk and relative to hybrid. You guys made that point a lot. Flash or AC, you sound, you know, pretty, pretty happy with that. Again, going after hybrid. And then this notion of bringing file services and object, that unified play, kind of a, right. kind of a uh, you know, the NetApp made, you know, great strides, you know, years ago uh, with that capability. And then the data protection piece, the recovery with Cohesity, the fast recovery, that's another TAM expansion. So really, I identified four points of, of potential growth area for you over the next you know, several years. I wonder if you could talk about that. Absolutely, we do feel very positive about all these areas. These areas open up a huge amount of the TAM that we didn't play in before. So Flash or AC, for example, as you say, Flash was always a primary uh, workload uh, environment for Flash because it was very expensive compared to disk. 
higher performance, better, uh, you know, uh, better ecological footprint, uh, denser, faster, cheaper, or, or more expensive though. So it only went after primary workload, but the vast majority of data storage is secondary uh, workload, things that don't require the high performance uh, and therefore customers want it less expensive. And of course there are even more bits there, but Flash Array C now competes very well with low cost disk, uh, which is amazing. And of course it's 10 times lower footprint and 10 times more reliable. So uh, we, you know, this is the first and literally today only product that is all flash in that secondary workload market. So it just opens up a huge amount for us. And then, yes, I, I love talking about data protection uh, for the following reason. You know, customers actually uh, don't want to do a backup, right? If you think about it, what they really want is recovery. Uh, you know, backup is what you have to do in order to get recovery. And these ba uh, backup systems have been very good at backup, but usually can take 24, 48, or even more uh, hours uh, to be able to recover from a failure. And now with ransomware, uh, you know, you don't want your, your, uh, your website to be down for days before it comes back up. You don't want your traders not trading, you know, for days. It costs a lot of money. And with uh, what we call rapid recovery and now, and now uh, flash recover, uh, you know, we can have uh, companies come back within an hour uh, or, you know, or two at most uh, with, a, you know, a rapid recovery solution. And so the, the, uh, the integrated solution that we've put together with Cohesity uh, allows customers to very quickly get up and running with an anti-ransomware uh, anti solution that allows them to get back up, up and operating in, in no time at all. Well, it's interesting to see you choosing the partner route. I mean, you could have, I mean, you remember EMC in the day, they, they bought in you know, data protection and it actually worked out pretty well for them. You look at a company like NetApp, they've chosen not to vertically integrate with backup. You're, you're choosing the same path. What's the thinking there? Stick, stick to your knitting and, and partner up and add value where you can? Yeah, you know, we have strong partnerships actually with all of the data backup uh, players, Veritas, Veeam, uh, with, uh, 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 with Rubrik uh, and others. Uh, and um, we, uh, you know, in many cases, customers have already made their decision who their backup player is. Also, you know, backup is actually a very, uh, is, a, is a relatively fragmented market. Uh, there, you, there's backup for different types of applications and different vendors have strengths and weaknesses in each one of those. And so our partnership across the backup board is very important to us. We did see, however, um, customers wanting an integrated solution, which we have, let's say, initiated with Cohesity, but we believe it's the first of what will be multiple pure validated designs, uh, not all of which will be OEM'd, but all of which will be available as integrated systems in the market through our channel partners. And so you can expect to see more of these as we go forward. So kind of the, P the PVDs. Okay, I wanna ask you about your subscription model. Um, it's growing very nicely. Um, are there nuances there just in terms of understanding the income statement, i.e., uh, you know, product revenue was down, subscriptions growing. Are you going through that transition and having to sort of educate people on the impact on the income statement? Uh, you didn't make a big deal out of that on the earnings call, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'm overstating that, but I wonder if you could talk about that dynamic. No, no, you're absolutely correct, and there is some of that going on on the earnings statement. The, the bigger part, though, of, let's say, the lower growth this quarter was due, and, and the forecast was due to the pandemic, no doubt, right. and especially in the U.S., especially hard hit in the U.S. But simultaneously, we are going through the transition that many companies have had to go through in the past, where uh, a larger proportion over time of our sales are going to be uh, what we call pure as a service, uh, and our unified subscription. Uh, so moving to subscription from CapEx. And whenever you do that, uh, you know, it takes a while, even though your sales as in, you know, bookings uh, can stay, uh, you know, uh, on the, uh, in, in the growth path, the revenue takes a while to catch up as your subscription bookings grow. Uh, grow. So y there is some of that going on on our P&L as well. Yeah, well, it's the nirvana to the extent you can get that that model, and of course, your RPO is a good indication of you got a nice backlog. That's you know, so that's certainty in revenue. That's correct, and, and the RPO is very nice, and it reflects the fact that we have multi-year con uh, uh, contracts going in with customers who are choosing pure as a service in Evergreen, uh, and of course, uh, the the billing only reflects what we've actually billed them for. 
I was struck by your comments uh, regarding uh, your main competitor, which is Dell, Dell EMC. Now, of course, in, in the, the, the early days of Pure, I always, I've, I've always said you guys drove a truck through the old VNX and, 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 and uh, Symmetrics base. Um, and, and, but you, you said you're seeing Power Max more than you're seeing Power Store. And that was I interesting and, and so, somewhat surprising to me. Yeah. Well, so a, a, a standard play of Dell is to offer VMAX because it's less expensive uh, versus, um, uh, versus our flash array. And then when, it, when the customer uh, clearly says, well, it's just not performant enough or uh, it, you know, the, it just can't do the work that, we're, uh, that we need, then they'll offer PowerMax at uh, supposedly a, a deep discount uh, to be able to compete uh, with uh, Flash Array. So that's, a, that's been a favorite tactic of theirs for quite some time. Uh, you know, we, have, we, we maintain our win rates against that. Power Store, on the other hand, <clears throat> remember it's a forklift upgrade with a new product on four different uh, Dell uh, existing uh, products, right? And two things, one is customers are just reluctant right now to try new things, right? And they don't have the time uh, to be able to test them uh, properly. But I also think it's, um, I, I think there's some reluctance even on Dell's part to put those uh, properties up for grabs right now when customers are more risk adverse. So, you know, we continue, as I said, we, we are not seeing it as much as we had, uh, had thought we might uh, going into this. Yeah, well, we'll definitely find out more tomorrow. And I would expect that you're, it, the, to the extent that you're having more and more success in file, you're going to obviously run into NetApp more. Yeah, and that's what we're expecting. You know, the, the, flash, the file services on Flash Array C really allow us to start to penetrate the general purpose file market. Clearly not on the very small, you know, we're not going after the very small market. Uh, you know, we're going after the data center, you know, file share, uh, file share market on this and the tier two uh, and the, the tier two uh, workloads. Well, what do you, what's the early returns there? I mean, you saw the NetApp did the, the, the solid fire acquisition to shore up. I mean, NetApp kind of missed flash and then, then bought solid fire, but that is obviously, you know, a, a good play. It, it, do you feel like it's a, it's a, it's a tougher road than perhaps the, the old EMC install base or what are you seeing early on? Well, you know, there's a lot of maturity, obviously, in files, and it'll take us a while to be able to get up to full levels of maturity in files. But what customers love about us is our simplicity. You know, and our file services on Flash Array is just as simple as our block, uh, you know, as our block services on, on Flash Array. And I think what customers are going to find is a very performant product that requires very little maintenance, uh, very little tuning uh, to, meet their, uh, to meet their needs. And I think they're just going to appreciate the fact that it's a true, you know, full, uh, fully capable block product with a fully capable set of file services and that they'll be able to consolidate more and more of their, uh, of their uh, use cases onto, onto smaller and smaller footprint. So I think that's what they're going to appreciate about what we do. Listen, that, that's ironic, out, out, out simplifying, uh, you know, NetApp, which of course made its name, uh, <laughs> taking on guys like Auspex, for those of you who remember that, or even, even the early days. So, so that's good. I, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about, about cloud, um, you know, thinking on cloud. I know it's early days, and I know most of your subscriptions, of course, uh, are, are still with, with on-prem, but you made an interesting announcement last year at Accelerate with, with Cloud Block Store running on AWS. How's the uptake been there? What can you tell us about that? Yeah, we're seeing a good uptake there. I'd say more of it is in the DevOps uh, environment than in the actual um, NDR, uh, disaster recovery, more than it is in transition of primary workloads into, uh, uh, into the cloud. And we're just seeing a, a bit less of that than one would expect given all the, uh, all the press around it. I, I don't think it's us. I think customers are just taking a while. They're, they're focusing their new activities in the cloud and much less about uh, transitioning existing environments. But we are seeing work done there. What we are seeing is a huge uptake in what we call our unified subscription, which is uh, pure as a service on-prem where we deliver to our customers uh, basically cloud, uh, the, the equivalent from their point of view of cloud storage on-prem where we manage the entire environment, plus the unified subscription is that plus cloud block store. So regardless of where, where our customers want to place their data, either on-prem or in the cloud, it's the same price uh, and the same contract, same interface, same management. 
uh, to them. So we've seen a huge, I mean, literally an incredible spike in uptake in that. Great, thank you for that. And then, I, you know, I, I got to end with, uh, I asked you last time about, about networking. You have a, a very wide observation space and a lot of expertise in a lot of different areas. So I want to ask you about, we've seen a, this spate of IPOs this week. Right? Uh, Snowflake came out, Palantir, Unify, you know, uh, uh, JFrog, a number of others. Uh, very interesting to, to see that in the valley. You're in the valley. Of course, you shut in the valley like everybody else these days. But, but what do you make of that? Is it you know, kind of everybody you know, trying to get in before the election, or is it just you know, a really good time? What, what's, your, what's your take on that? I, I think a lot of it is getting in before the election. But you know, a lot of, the, of stock market movements, as you well know, has to do with uh, cash flows more than it has to do with, uh, you know, with the prospects of individual companies. And just given the amount of stimulus that's taking place, not just in the US, but worldwide, there's a lot of money floating around, which is buoying stock market prices. And so it's a great, there, uh, an old, uh, an old uh, colleague of mine had a saying, when money's on sale, take it. And uh, you know, that seems to be the case right now, at least as far as the stock market is concerned. Mm. And I took, therefore, a good time for IPOs. Well, the, uh, the Palantir IPO took a swipe at Silicon Valley broadly, really targeting I think Facebook and Google really don't have anything to do with your business, but but I mean I think as an executive in Silicon Valley, you you see the innovation and the software development that's going into so many good things. I, I was struck by that though. I thought it was a little bit of a, of a of a cheap shot at Silicon Valley. It really was aimed at at Google and Facebook because there's so many companies, you know, from you guys, Cisco, Palo Alto Networks, it'll work on and on and on that are just doing some great software work. And we're seeing that with with COVID. Where would we be without without big tech? Well, thank you, Dave. I mean, I think, you know, the press tends to focus on the consumer companies that, you, you know, and we all have maybe our own individual opinions about the way they operate, but you're correct. I mean, I think the good foundational work that uh, many companies in Silicon Valley are doing to make our lives easier every day, uh, you know, just continues to really, really impress. Well, Charlie Giancarlo, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much. You're generous with your time. I really appreciate uh, you coming on the queue. Thank you, Dave. Again, as you said, always a pleasure to speak with you and look forward to doing it next quarter. All right. Us as well. And thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. We'll see you next time. We're out.